It's Father Norm. I wasn't able to be with you last week. Lots going on. And this week I'm here and I'm looking forward to connecting with you. And as I've told you before, I appreciate when some of you uh, send responses uh, uh, to comment on something that maybe I have said. You know, one of the most important things for all of us, but especially as priests, but maybe I should just say no, everybody, that we know in following the way of Jesus Christ. We're called to be as holy, as loving, as prayerful, as centered as we should be you know, as a follower of Jesus. And so you know, in a good way, yeah, we are striving, hopefully with grace, with God's love, we need to remember that, I need to remember that, striving to be our best at the same time we also maybe struggle with, and is there another way we need to better deal with our imperfection? Some imperfection may be sinfulness, some may not be. It may just be that we don't feel we're as good in an area or as competent in an area. This coming week, uh, over 180 priests from the diocese are, are coming together at a conference center, and we're gonna hear presentations, we're going to talk about our own sense of faith and how in this culture that we live in today in which so many people are confused about values and, and faith and, and their lives, how do we, in the midst of that, respond? How do we pastor? How do we care? And to know that we won't do it perfectly. I bring that up because I can remember, and we have a lot of newly ordained at this convocation center, that when I was first ordained, and I probably mentioned this, there were times when uh, when I was just ordained and I was gonna give the perfect homily and, and the perfect response to people. And I remember for a while, that first year, I'd give a homily, I'd preach it, I'd pray about it, I'd do it. And then afterward, I'd stew about it. Uh, and I think, oh man, that homily wasn't very good, or oh man, I could have done this better, you know? And, and I think, where God shaped me up in some ways, one, to be more aware of what I was doing, and two, I can remember sometimes I think, that was the worst homily I think I ever could have given. Somebody comes out of Mass and says, Father, you said exactly what I needed to hear. Yeah, you, you, you spoke to my heart, and wow. You know, my caution was I was thinking about me and not how the Holy Spirit can work through me and even in spite of me and touch other lives. That's important to know. We're never going to have it all together as, as followers of Jesus or if we're following of some other faith or ideal. We always come up short. The beauty of the, of the Christian faith is it speaks of grace. Grace is the gift of God's love. It's not earned, it's gift. Our deepest identity, and I've needed to remind myself prayerfully, or I let God remind myself of, of this a few times, our deepest identity is we are a beloved daughter or son of God. That never goes away. Whatever we mess up, even if we sin, or we're not as competent in an area we'd like to be, we are still a beloved child of God. I know when I get caught up in my imperfections, and, and by that, uh, sin sometimes, but other things, the imperfect homily or the imperfect day, getting everything organized in my office, whatever, those kind of things too. But I know when, when, when I let that weigh me down as a priest, I'm not keeping in mind God saying, hey, Norm, you're too caught up in self and not caught up in my love for you and your identity, not that you got it all together and you do everything practically perfectly, but your identity, you are a wounded sinner. You are somebody who falls short of the mark like everybody else. And I remember God has told me sometimes in those cases and, and as he told those first disciples, and I can use you that way because you mess up, because you fall short, because if those things happen to you, uh, you can help others. And one example of that, I remember probably, again, now I'm thinking back to my first parish 
48 years ago, St. Barnabas. I remember one of my first confessions, obviously I can tell this, you're not gonna know who the person was, it's 50 years ago. But, but I remember a, a, a man coming to me in great pain, he was like 85, and he said, Father, he said, some of the thoughts I get, some of the attitudes I get, there's, there, there's stuff that I had when I was 25, uh, you know, and I still got them. This must be awful. How can God love me? And these were just some passing thoughts, not even that serious or, or, or harmful or, or sinful, but just, just wanting to have his mind always clear and together and, and recognizing. And I remember talking to him and say, that's okay. I've had lots of people in confession confess and come back really upset because I thought I was done with this, I was over with this, I went on a retreat, I had such good intentions and then I blew it, okay? Again, are we to strive with God's grace to do better? Yes. Are we to know God's grace when we mess up? He's still there with us and for us to say, I love you and I'll work through you and I'll be at work in spite of you. As the parent you are, as the teacher you are, as the Christian you are, again, striving for excellence, but not striving with our own ego. That's where I get caught up, striving with that awareness of God's grace. And God's grace, well, know it's God's grace when I'm being open to that and doing my best and fall short, then I know, hey, Lord, you can use me anyway. You can work through this anyway. You're not waiting for me to have the most successful homily or, or counseling technique before you can work. Thanks be to God. We're all freer to remember that. And, and again, tap into the Lord, helping us be better, but in the meantime, loving us and working through us to others, sometimes even in spite of ourselves. God bless.